This is Base Webb, who's facing charges of attempted murder in Paris, Kentucky. A week prior to this, a surveillance video outside a Kentucky jail captured the alarming moment when Webb, a former inmate with a three-month sentence for assault charges, accelerated his car in an attempt to run over two jail employees. One of the employees narrowly avoided the vehicle, but the other suffered injuries as Webb's car pinned him against a wall. However shocking his crimes were, wait till you see how Webb handled himself in court. During Webb's initial court appearance, presided over by Judge Vanessa Dixon, his disruptive behavior persisted. Before the proceedings continued, Judge Dixon informed Webb that she recused herself from the trial due to her acquaintance with the targeted jail employees and because she simply didn't want to see Webb at all. This is where things got a little crazy. Just in case you missed that, we'll slow it down for you. Webb literally spits on the judge. Not the brightest move to disrespect the person who was responsible for your freedom or continued incarceration. In fact, immediately after being spat on, Judge Dixon orders to charge him. However, things didn't end here for Bass, because only a short period after this incident, while awaiting trial, he, along with four other inmates, incited a riot at the Fayette County Detention Center. During this chaotic event, Webb was shot with beanbag bullets and struck in the neck by a pepper ball. Undeterred, he proceeded to hurl a metal telephone box at a corrections officer. Fast forward to Bass's next courtroom hearing. This time, in addition to his previous two counts of attempted murder related to his vehicular attack on the jail employees, Bass is also facing third-degree assault charges for his involvement in the riot. However, if you thought the story of Bass Webb ends here, you're deeply mistaken. Because now we fast forward five years later, and Bass is once again in court. This time, Bass is facing charges for the murder of an ex-girlfriend from almost a decade earlier, Bria Runiewicz. Interestingly enough, Bria had been studying to become a law enforcement officer and was a Bourbon County Jail employee at the time of her murder. A cold case was resurrected following a jailhouse tip that led to the discovery of the victim's remains. During this particular court appearance, Webb showcased a shocking new appearance adorned with sinister head tattoos. These tattoos unveiled a disturbing murder hit list targeting judges, prosecutors, law enforcement officers, and the media. As the courtroom proceedings began taking place, so did Webb's antics. Webb, you want to come forward? Here we see the judge ask Webb to come forward and stand. Instead, Webb decides he would rather not and smiles at the request. Following over a week of courtroom proceedings, the jury reached a verdict, finding Webb guilty of intentional murder. The trial provided details of how Webb choked his former girlfriend to death and buried her in a shallow grave. Bass received a life sentence with the possibility of parole after 25 years. Bass Webb is a prime example of a convict acting crazy in court. There's the case of Daniel Villegas, who spent 18 years in prison for a double homicide he never committed. At the young age of 16, Daniel was convicted and has been behind bars since. On April 10, 1993, Armando Mando Lazo, 17, and Bobby England, 18, along with two other individuals, were walking home from a house party when a car approached them slowly and sped away. Witnesses reported that the car turned around and came back toward the group, eventually stopping. Someone from the back seat opened fire, tragically killing Lazo and England. However, the story doesn't end there. You're probably wondering how Daniel became a suspect to the case in the first place. Well, as it turns out, there was actually no physical evidence linking Daniel to the crime in the first place. There was no DNA found, no firearms retrieved, and no forensic evidence linking him to the case at all. He was convicted based on the testimony of a friend who claimed he confessed the crime to him. This was a reliable witness in 2014 who told the detectives, I asked him if he did it, and he said yes. When 16-year-old Villegas was brought in for questioning, an El Paso detective threatened him with beatings and the death penalty unless he confessed to the murder. Under duress, the teenage Villegas signed a prepared confession from the detectives. He attempted to withdraw his confession a few hours later, but it was already too late. Viegas was charged with two counts of capital murder, with the false confession being the sole evidence against him. After spending 18 years behind bars, his verdict was eventually overturned, and Viegas was released on bond. He got married and started a family during this time. However, a third trial awaited him, which would determine his fate. Finally, the moment arrived, and Viegas stood in the courtroom, uncertain if he would return home to his family or be sent back to prison for life. Watch as the judge delivers the news to Daniel, 
that his 18-year-long nightmare was finally over. In the District Court of El Paso County, Texas, 409th Judicial District, the state of Texas versus Daniel Villegas, number 940D09328. The El Paso jury found him not guilty of capital murder, marking his true freedom since his teenage years. Verdict form B, we, the jury, find the defendant Daniel Villegas not guilty of... <laughs> Daniel was incarcerated for a total of 23 years, 6 months, and 11 days. Daniel's case is guaranteed to bring out your emotional side. However, not all courtroom proceedings gain attention because of the feel-good factor. We have a case that features two brutal teenage murderers in Antonio Barbo and Nathan Pop, who are facing charges for murder in Sheboygan County, Wisconsin. The two teenagers brutally killed Barbo's great-grandmother, 78-year-old Barbara Olson, in her Sheboygan Falls home in September 2012. According to police reports, Barbo struck her several times with a hatchet as his accomplice, Nathan Pop, simultaneously used a hammer to bludgeon 78-year-old Olsen to death. Only minutes after the attack, the boys would be seen on surveillance footage getting gloves and wipes, almost acting as if nothing had happened. However brutal the slaying was, wait till you hear how they justified the murder. How much money was there in the cash? About, I think, 150. And where is that? Some of it went towards food. And then um, we got pizza, and then some of it went towards weed, which I think is actually still at his house upstairs, if he didn't get it. That's right, you heard that correctly. The boys decided to murder Barbara Olson for money to buy pizza and weed. Watch here as surveillance footage captured the boys just hours later, enjoying a couple slices, almost acting as if they hadn't just committed a murder. During the trial, Barbo entered a plea of no contest to first-degree intentional homicide. This plea was part of a deal that reduced his charge. Previously, Barbo had pleaded not guilty by reason of mental disease or defect, but he changed his plea in this proceeding as a result. Barbo was sentenced to life in prison with the possibility of parole after 36 years, by which time he would be 50 years. When given the opportunity to address the court, Barbo struggled to express himself and could not complete his statement. I know I don't show my emotions much. I myself am not sure why, but that doesn't mean I don't. His lawyer stepped in and finished on his behalf. I took away someone's mother, their grandma, sister, friend, when I have no right to do so. As he was escorted out of the court, Anthony can be seen crying and sobbing. His accomplice, Nathan, was also sentenced to life imprisonment and will not be eligible for parole until he turns 45. He showed no emotion as he was seen leaving the court. What makes Barbo and Pop's case so shocking is because they were barely teenagers at just 14 years old. We're in the Cuyahoga County Justice Center where a sentencing hearing is wrapping up. Thank you all. Good luck, Mr. Terry. Thank you, Mr. William Terry just received an 18-month prison sentence for attempted burglary and attempted felonious assault. Present in court of the defendant's family behind him and the victim of this crime seated across the courtroom. He's headed directly to prison. He's speaking to his family now. And then... Some choice words for the victim. Touch me like that, dude. Court deputies trying to subdue the handcuffed defendant. Incident. No additional time is added to his sentence.